to another episode of the Slay Your Day podcast. If you are ready to talk building community, self-care, relationships, and all the things today, we are diving in with best-selling author, community of one million women, and economic forum women of the year, Sarah Pendrick. Sarah, I'm so happy that you're here today. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. I love chatting with you and getting to see you. <laughs> yes. So you and I uh, connected originally, I think it was from like through mutual friends, just through like social. And then we connected here in Miami when you were visiting. So I want, I'm so excited to just like dive into all the things with you because I love watching you. Well, first of all, I love hanging out with you in real life, but I also love watching you on social because everything you post, it's so powerful. It's so empowering. And I can't wait to just dive into asking you some of the questions that I feel like a lot of women today really need. So I'm excited to dive into this. Yes. I actually love the story of how we met because I don't know how, but we became like Instagram friends. Yeah. And then we were like supporting each other. And I felt like I knew you. And then when we met in person in Miami a few years ago, I like already thought like we were already friends. It I wasn't know. Like, it was like our first time hanging out, which I love. And that's one of the positives of social media. I feel like you can just meet amazing women no matter Definitely. where you live. And I have so many girlfriends, like close girlfriends, even now that that is how I've met them is just like through social. And it's like this unspoken thing of like, like I'm out there supporting her and then it's reciprocated and you just feel like you already know that person. And I think just like you said, there's so much power in, you know, being able to be connected through social and it's not all negative. There's so much that you can do, you know, building a community, having these friendships. And I love that it doesn't have to be just to like the city that you're in to create those relationships. Yeah. I feel like I obviously could say so many negative things about social, but also <laughs> put a positive. And I think for me, and I know a lot of your audience are probably entrepreneurs, small business owners, and it was really hard when I became decided to be, I guess I've always been an entrepreneur, but it was really hard when I started my first business. And I just felt like I didn't have women around me that were doing that. A lot of my friends worked nine to fives and it was just amazing that I could become friends and connect with women all around the country. And it made me feel like less alone. So I love yeah. that. So what was that first business that you started? So my first business ever was I actually went to school to get my master's and I thought I was going to be a psychologist. And then I came out to LA for something like some event or something. And I never came back. Wow. Oh my God. I love <laughs> yeah, it. I, I look at that now. I'm like, oh, I like loved that beginner's mindset. Like just like yeah. burn the boats. How old are you when, you when you moved out? I was in my twenties. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I had went to uh, California to visit family when I was 13 and I'm from Pennsylvania and I got on the flight and I landed in California and I was actually with my grandparents and I was like, I'm never leaving. Like, I never want to leave this place, but I ended up marrying a guy from California. So, you know, it all worked out. Oh, is he from California? <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that. From San Diego. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I was trying to find a job here. It was hard. Like I was like, I'm living in LA. I was about to go get my doctorate, decided not to. I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? So I was trying to do everything like sell credit card machines. Like it was just like wild, but super fun. And then I decided to get into PR and marketing and I just found my first client and built a boutique PR and marketing agency. Then I met my husband like three or four months into living here when it was like my time to be single. I'm like, I'm going to uh -huh. be single. I don't care about meeting anyone. It always happens like that. I yep. met him. And we ended up getting into business together. And then for a few years of doing PR and marketing, I kind of realized like, oh, I'm building everyone else's businesses and brands. Like yeah. I want to build one for myself. So that's when I started all my stuff. I love that. Well, as I had mentioned, you have built a community of over 1 million women. And I want to dive into this because I think that like we were mentioning in the beginning, you know, there is this power of social media where you get to build community, but there's a way to do it where it's real and it's authentic. And then you, you can also see and feel that there's, you see other women that are doing this in probably not the most authentic or real way. So I would love to hear from you. What has been maybe like two or three tips that you can share with us about building a community and 
a community that is long lasting, not just something that you build for a few months and it fizzles out, like something that is, is sustainable and you really feel connected to. Yeah. So I feel like social media, like all like the tips and tricks and like, obviously like reels happened and all of that kind of like changes the strategy sometimes. But even with that, I think these tips stand the test of time. The mm -hmm. first one, I would think no matter what your business is, I think you should start little events like in your area because there's, if yeah. you need it, that means someone else needs it. I did my first event and I'm living in Manhattan beach in Manhattan beach. It was the easiest. You would think like starting off my business, it would be the hardest to do, but it was actually the easiest event I've ever put on. Like wow. I pulled out the room. I didn't realize how many women were actually looking for that. They were over the whole name tag thing. And they're like, Hey, I yeah. just want to like have fun, be in like a good environment, have women that are entrepreneurs and want to support each other. So you could do that on like a 200 person scale, or you could even do it on a 20 person scale. I think yeah. that that like st stands the test of time. Like you just have a place for women to go and connect. And you know, us as women, like we like to be together in groups, it's like in our yes. nature. Yes. And you never know who you're going to meet. I mean, I feel like also similar to here in Miami, you know, there's, there's things you can do outside the box of just going to, you know, a conference room. Like you can go to a yoga studio. I've done things in my community where we're doing cooking classes. We're doing self-defense classes. I mean, it's very outside of the box of your typical networking, but yeah. it gets people moving and having fun together. Yeah, I feel like you guys are your group's really good at that. Like I always see you networking. I'm always like, how does she do it all? But <laughs> <laughs> you're really good at that. And that's a good point. It's like get 15 women and get like a private yoga studio and yeah. get together and do whatever. So I think I think that's a good one. I also think how you and I met. Like mm -hmm. do a little search around the internet or you know you have those like besties that you haven't met yet where you're like, I love her content or Yes. Um I like, like to connect with her. We talk in the DMs, like form a little group and yeah. do some like giveaways together, create some content, create some like on, an on a little online event. So I just think it's like getting yeah. women into groups, which it just expands your network and it's where we're supposed, it's what we're supposed to be doing anyways. It's like, like I said, it comes natural to us. Yeah. So I think that that's the biggest thing. And also the niche micro influencers are such a thing now. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like before everyone wanted to have like a million followers and we would obsess about follower account, but it's like micro influencers are crushing it. Like brands yes. want that, like people want that. Cause then they know you're just like really being authentic in your content. I just feel like if you focus on those three things, even if you're far along in your business, it's just going to expand everything. Yes. That's so good. And what would you say to the, to the woman that is, is doing this and, and growing her business and doing these events, but wants to be kind of have more support and that engaged community, like outside, because like, we're all busy. We all, and I, even for myself, you know, it's like, I have to prioritize, am I going to this event one week or once a month or whatever it is. So how do you keep that engagement even like in between the events? Um, I think that, I do a few different things. I'll sometimes have like a monthly call. So mm -hmm. maybe there's like a few of us that just, if you can get on, get on. If you can't, no worries. And like, you yeah. just keep inviting like-minded women, maybe start a WhatsApp group and have that. And then you just ho host, like people are sick of Zooms. Yes. And yeah. everyone still wants to connect, especially when you're a businesswoman, you're looking for support, yeah. you're looking to give value. So if you just have like a standing, it, just, it could be once every other month. Another thing that I love is um, if you have a, ma a little mastermind of like four to six women where it could be maybe every quarter you guys meet and you just really support each other and you have those little touch points on WhatsApp. So it's not on your text messages and you're getting text right. messages from your partners, your kids, business partners. You're like, I can't have another text message group. But if you have a WhatsApp group that you know, this is for connection with like the women or yeah. entrepreneurs and I'm going to go in and see what's going on. I feel like it's a lot, le a lot less pressure and yeah. it's not another thing on your to-do list. You're just excited about it. Yes. I love that. Well, I'll tell you something else that I have been obsessed with is your book, Beautifully Brave. I have it right here. First of all, this is like, again, you and I, so I'm, I'm going to put it in the shot here. 
There we go. And that it matches your office. It does. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's like so on brand with my colors and office and all the things, yeah. which is why I'm also obsessed with it. And it's so pretty. Like it's one of those coffee table books that you want to have out and you want people to go through because I mean, I have, I have some like some little notes in here, but if you go through, like you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you'll be able to see, but it's so beautiful. And not only that, but like you want to use it. You know how like you'll get a planner or you get something and you have like the best intentions of reading it or using it, but you never do. Like you want to open this, you want to use this. So you guys, first of all, go out, grab this. But I want you to talk about a little, Sarah, what what? Because I know that this book took you a while to to come to life. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me a little bit about like that, not just the process, but like what inspired you to finally like get it on paper and get it out into the world? Yeah. So I'll be honest, especially when you're like an online content creator, I kind of feel like writing a book like comes with the territory. Like you're like, yeah. oh, check check it off the list. Like, of course <laughs> I would write a book. And I never, I always knew that I was going to write a book, but I didn't like that energy. Like I knew that's the way I was feeling about it. So I'm like, I'm not going to push it and do anything until I like have an idea that I feel really good about, really authentic, like feel authentic about. And you know, writing a book is difficult. Like it's yeah. not super easy. It takes a lot of time. And I thought I was going to be the one in the coffee shop, like sitting down, like busting things out. And I would get to the coffee shop and I didn't have anything to say. So it was like, yeah. I'm sure you had the same experience. It was a whole journey. But yes. I think when it clicked for me, I'm like, oh, on my brand, which this is another thing. And I feel like you're so true to your brand as well. This is something I've learned in the last couple of years. Anytime something, a little tangent, but not really. Anytime something wasn't working out, I feel like it was because I went off brand. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. That's so good. I'm like getting chills. Yes. It's so yeah. true. So that's like a really big lesson for me. Even when you said the people that are like maybe struggling and they're like, oh, I don't have a lot of engagement or I don't have this community. It's like, do an audit of your life, do an audit of every area, do an audit of your social and just be like, what am I putting out? That's really not me. Like, yes. you have to be really honest with oh, yourself. Oh, this is so good. Yeah. Like I knew yeah. I was doing that, but I didn't even realize I was doing it. You know, it's not like I was doing it on purpose, but then I'm like, something just isn't right. I don't feel right. I started to realize where I was going off brand in which case things weren't working. Mm -hmm. So for me having this book and having like a goal, like, Oh, you have to like have X amount of copies sold. I decided that that really wasn't on brand with me. And if I did that, it wasn't going to work. So yeah. that's where I was like, what do I love? I love things that catch your eye, that make you feel good, that bring you energy. So that's why I decided to do a coffee, a coffee table book or a nightstand book. And it's maybe not something that you sit and read in every setting, like you sit cover to cover, but it's something that you pick up. It's something that looks beautiful in your, in your home. Yeah. One of the chapters is about self-care and yeah. it's really specific, like what actual self-care will move the noodle, the noodle, the needle for you. <laughs> yes. So you just sometimes I'll open it and be like, oh, what was that thing that I used to like practice and I forgot? And then I'll go and yeah. remember it in the book and it's really helpful. So for me, that's how I wanted my book journey to look. I love that so much because again, is whether if you're just on social media media or as a content creator, sometimes it feels like you have to put content out just to put it out. And just yeah. like you're saying, if it doesn't feel true to you, it's not going to do well anyway. So you're kind of just wasting time to put something out there versus something that really feels good to you. And you know, your audience is going to be attracted to that as well. So I love that piece of advice because when you're when you're in that and you're feeling it, know that that's directing you. So that's that's such a good piece of advice. Exactly. And I also, I don't know what you think about this, but something that, because I went through a little burnout period in the last year or two, mm -hmm. and I realized that it was because, again, I was getting off brand. So if yeah. you're like on brand, following your energy, obviously you're going to get tired, but the burnout was really connected to like, oh, I was putting a lot, all my worth into work. Easy yeah. for entrepreneurs to do. Whereas like if I didn't have anything to do for a day or, or I always had something to do, but if I was like, I'm gonna have a break today and I wasn't performing, I just right. look, look at myself differently and judge myself. Mm -hmm. And then I went into this burnout because like I said, not on purpose. I was like, oh, because so many people I had so in, in the beginner's mind, I didn't have anyone telling me what to do. 
But yeah. then, and as an entrepreneur, you don't have a boss. It's not like you have someone yeah. telling you do this, do that. You're the one, you know, driving the ship, <laughs> directing yeah, the ship. You're like, hey, I want this, or I wish someone created this, so I'm going to do it. But then, once your business gets bigger and you have more people and you have more team, like everyone has an opinion, and you can really get off track. Yeah. I feel like I was getting off track, and that's where like burnout and just like things not working. That's what started to happen to me. Yeah, I mean, I know for me, uh, I experienced that when I had both of my kids. Like when I first had Jake and I was like, my world is upside down now. I have no idea like how I'm supposed to do work and take care of this baby and the house and my husband and myself. Like that was wild for me. And then the second time when I had Jordy, it was during COVID and literally the same month that my book came out is when I had him. And I had hired like a PR team at that time because I I was like, I don't want to have to worry about this. I want someone else to just do this and take it off my plate so I don't have to worry about it. But you still feel that overwhelming sense of like, I've got to do all the things. I've got to do all the things versus like, what? If, maybe there's one thing I need to do today to move myself forward. And you know what? Maybe it might be just being with my baby, you know, yeah. like, and, and if you don't have kids then you know what, maybe it's just like a self care day, but whatever that is, I love that in this book, you're giving like the readers ourselves permission to just be okay with that because the, the other option is yes, there is burnout. So it's like, let's honor it and, and put focus and attention on feeling what we need to feel moving through it versus staying stuck in it. Yeah. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, like you have that driven mindset where like nothing really is ever enough. You're like, right. I I could do this next thing. I could really crush it at this or like people that need support over here. So it's like, you already have that built in mindset where like you're driven. So there's always more. Yes. And the thing for me that I realized and a lot of like the reason that I wrote the book and why the chapters are the way they are is that I am like that inherently because I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but also it was, it's not, it serves me in some ways and then it doesn't (laughs) serve me in others. So I'm all about like what you said. I have a piece of paper because I'm same. I have 20 planners and have never written in any of them. Right. (laughs) They look so pretty and I have the best (laughs) intentions of using it. (laughs) So I'm on our um, kitchen table. I'll just have a little pad and I'm going to write down like five things that I'm for sure going to get done in the day. And like, I'll just mark them off and it's easy. Some of it's easy. Like I'm going to get outside and do a walk. And like, I just feel like that makes you more productive that like gets you in the flow. And it also has you take care of yourself when you do things like that. I love it. What are some of your favorite, like go-to self-care either like regimens or just like indulgences that you like to take part in? So I love walks. I mean, I live at the beach, so I feel like anything that I'm going through, if I go down there and just take that in. Yes. um, Yes. Anytime that I'm in places where there's not a beach, I think you can, any, any place in nature, even just like putting your feet on the ground. Yeah. Um, meditations are so meditations and prayer, like everything for me, like even if it's just 10 minutes, like I don't try to push it and say, I have to meditate for an hour. It's like, Hey, like I connect with God and I meditate for 10 minutes and I'm so good. Yeah. And then more like luxury things. Like I'm obsessed with massages. I think that's like a mind body soul experience. Like it's like, it's like your body is carrying you through life. Like just do things to have it feel that you love it and make it feel good and run optimally. So I love that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I love my massages. If someone says to me, like, what's your biggest indulgence? I mean, chocolate comes to mind, but like even, even above that is a massage. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to ask you what yours are because you're like, your your voice is so cute. But I mean, your life is definitely a massage. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because you know why? It's like you're, you're, you're fueling so much into everybody else. Like as a mom, it's like, you've got your littles running around, you have your hubby, you got like the dinners and all these things. And it's like, just like an hour or 90 minutes, whatever it is, it could be 30 minutes, whatever the time is, you know, to just be there with yourself. And I even like to just like meditate when I'm getting a massage, like, what am I thinking about? What? And even like a gratitude list. I think about that, you know, you have an hour where you're just laying there and you can't work and you don't have your phone. So it's like forcing you to just kind of like go, go within and, you know, focus on what you want to focus on. Yeah. It's like a habit stack, which is very yes. high performer, but I mean, yes. it's efficient. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. 
Get a massage, do your gratitude list. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? When we moved into this house, we built a spa room. Like, cause my husband oh. loves massages. So we have a whole room that's like our spa room. So we have this, um, have you heard of like the EMF mats? Yeah. Like the grounding mats. So we have one of those. Yeah. We have our sauna and then we have the, the spa massage table. So it's like, I just go in there and it's dark and I can just get into the zone. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. So that's that's actually like an answer to your question too, is the habit stack. So if yeah. you're laying on the mat, I feel like that's so key for moms, entrepreneurs, where it's yeah. like you take things that you, like you're like brushing your teeth and listen to a podcast. Like right. just habit stacking is where you put as much into something like that you could do at the same time. And yes. that's something, when you said the EMF mat, I'm like, oh, I'll sit there and I do my ice roller and then I have this yep. 20 minute <laughs> mask that I do and then I have a meditation on. Yeah. So and you can't yeah. be on the phone on the mat. So so it's like you gotta yeah. put that thing away. You can journal. I read a book. So Jared, I, I posted, I think it was last month, all the books that I had read and he was like how did you read that many books? I'm like, well, we traveled. So like, you know, we went to Europe, just like you guys, I saw you guys were in Europe. So yeah. I said, you know, I had a lot of time where I could actually read. But when I sit on that mat, kind of like my morning routine, even 20 minutes of reading in the morning, like you, you get a lot done within that time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I love God. that. So what is your, I mean, I absolutely love your book. What is your favorite part of your book? Cause there's so much, there's so much, just like knowledge and information in there that I feel like just fuels our soul. So what is your favorite part of the book? I feel like depend because when did the book come out? I feel like depending on where I'm at in the day or in my life, I have different favorite parts. Like when the book yeah. first came out, I just loved like the science of happiness because I was such a researcher and I wanted to know like the why behind things. Like, yeah. And that's like your background. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then there was times when I was, teaching myself like you're you're not like your worth is not measured by what you do or your yeah. like, results and so I was really reading into the self-care um there's another chapter in like losing yourself which you know I really lost myself in the mo in the times before I ended up moving to LA yeah. and I just feel like there's times in your life like becoming a mom that you feel like you're losing yourself and you just get to get reconnected yeah so it's really just depends on where I'm at. I feel like there's something it. for everyone in there and um, you can just keep going back to it. So. Yes. You guys, I'm going to link um, the book in the show notes. If you're watching this on through podcast or YouTube, uh, I'm going to link the book so you can go and pick it up. And Sarah, I want to ask you, is there any final like message that you want to share with the listeners? It could be about your book. It could be just kind of where you're at right now. It could be about your community. Anything else that you want to share with the listeners? Um, I think for me, and this is really present to, you know, what I said of the journey that I've been going through is just to kind of take an audit of your life and just really pay attention to your energy. Something for me, just do a little, maybe like, I'm going to do this starting today. So this is why I'm sharing it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take inventory of like the things that I spend a lot of time on and my thoughts. So I can kind of see like what's subconsciously happening in my day and like mm -hmm. what areas could I improve on. And I feel like just doing like little audits like that just kind of show you like you're spending so much energy worrying about this or yes. you're spending your time like too much on social media, whatever it is. It's just like you can't lie. You're just seeing it there right on right. paper and I think that would be beneficial for everyone. I'm so excited to start that today. I love that. You know, it's I've talked a lot about doing audits within the business, like where you're putting your time, but I love this version of it because this is this is everything that's going on up here, whether it's yeah. business or taking care of yourself or I mean, it's everything. So I yeah. love I love this twist on the audit. Yeah. So I I have I was telling you I have a podcast that's going to launch at the end of the year, which obviously I would love to have you on and yes. we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. So amazing. Are you, are you going to share with us uh, the name of the podcast? Or are we waiting? Not yet, but okay. you can see that I keep mentioning audits. So I feel like that's a yeah. little hint. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you guys will have to stay tuned for Sarah's upcoming podcast. Do we know when it's going to launch? 
you know, one of those things where you're like, I have a November like date in mind, but I feel like it's going to end up being January, but let's just okay. see. <laughs> that's exciting. I mean, that's when, that's when I launched um, this podcast was January oh. of this year. And I feel yeah. like it's nice because it's like fresh. It's a new year. It's like a clean slate, but I feel like anytime like end of the year, beginning of the year, it's always, it always just feels to me like such a great time for like those new beginnings. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like I want it to be out, but it might make more sense to do it in January. So yeah, you'll know, you'll know when it's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Going back to that overachiever mindset, it's like right. Okay, check yourself and just when it, <laughs> just let it happen. Absolutely, I love it. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being here today. Where can everybody connect with you and find you? Yeah, so the best place would just be on Instagram at Sarah Pendrick, and then look out for my podcast, and then look out for Sandy to be on. And awesome. Well, guys, make sure you tag Sarah and myself at Sandy Glant on this episode. Let us know how you loved it and let us know what your number one takeaway was from this episode. Until next time, make sure to slay your day.